Hello, hi. We are once again back at the college desk, the ugly looking college desk that I have already ruined that I am going to have to clean or else I'm going to get in serious trouble for. Anyway, look at what finally showed up at my college mailbox. After weeks of waiting, this finally, finally came. The Muse Kits box. Smart Art has completely rebranded and changed around everything that they're doing. They've made a completely new style of box, new brand, new logo. It's awesome. And this is the final result. This is Muse Kits. It's exactly the same thing as Smart Art, just with a brand new name and a little bit of a new look, which I must say I like quite a lot. I'm just going to get right into opening up this box because I've been waiting weeks for this. Of course, I already know what's inside since I was delayed. So I'm pretty excited to get in here and try out what's inside. Well, would you look at that? They've got a new sticker on the box now and it's quite pretty, I must say. Let's get this opened on up. Same packaging as we've seen before. I really like that. Ooh, this is big. This is really big. Okay, this is the paper. I believe this is the paper. Let's see everything that's in here. Paintbrushes. Okay, there's some stuff in here that I didn't see a lot of. So there's a little bit of stuff here that I genuinely don't know about. Though, if you can't tell already, the whole theme for this box is scratch boarding, which is basically a medium where you have a board that you scratch off. It starts black and as you scratch off, it slowly reveals more and more white. I've never gotten to try this before, but I have seen art made with this that it turns out really, really cool. So I'm quite excited to try this out and see what I can make with it. We've got some nice scratch board inks here. These are inks specifically made for scratch board art. These look really interesting. We have a brush here. It's probably for like brushing away all of the remains of the scratch board paper because I do remember doing scratch board stuff as a kid and it was extremely messy. That is sharp. I'm not sure what this is. It looks like a fine liner. I'm not sure. This looks like it's supposed to be a fine liner. I'm not sure what this is. I'm gonna have to look at the catalog and see what's all in here because there's some stuff that I don't recognize. We've got I know what this is at least. There is a lot of scratch board in here, geez. So there's scratch board paper. There's an actual scratch board board right here. We have what looks to be more scratch board right here. And is there no little zine for this one? Looks like I may be a little bit on my own here. Okay, let's try to get all of this open. I'm gonna try and guess what all this is since I don't have a little zine. Unless it's in here. Let's see. It's scratch cards. It looks like these may be postcard size. Oh, this looks like a temp. Okay, so these are templates for scratch boarding. Magical animals. So as you can see, this is a lion. It looks like there may be all these templates for different art you can scratch off using this template. And there's four of them. So there is a lion. There is a cheetah a tiger that is upside down and there is a wolf. These are really detailed, very, very detailed. Those are just little templates. And this looks like it's your own scratch board to make your own designs. Probably what I'll jump straight to after figuring out how to use these materials. What are these multiple sheets of scratch board? We will find out. It looks like it is multiple sheets. And there are multiple sheets here. Three, five, eight, nine. Looks like 12 sheets that you can make your own designs with right here. Really cool. That is absolutely awesome. I'm excited about that. Oh, sheets to make whatever designs I want. Heck yeah. And then let's see how many boards are in here. It looks like there's three six by six boards here. If I can get this open. I might have to get a knife of some kind. Okay, so there are in fact three right here. And then we have engraving tools right here. I'm really going to be guessing for most of this because again, I don't have a Z. I'm missing the Z. I'm going to have to do quite a bit of this on my own it seems. I might look online for some resources. I think the brushes are here to help with the ink that comes with the box when you're adding color to it. I don't know if I'll add color to mine. I honestly quite like the idea of going just black and white. That is really appealing to me. I'll play around a little bit with the colors, see how they work, but I think in the end I'm ultimately going to stick with just black and white. Okay, so I watched a bunch of videos. I watched the videos from Muse Kits and I watched a couple other videos just about the basics of scratch boarding and I think I have an idea of where I can go with this now. I learned that these are actually not white. They actually have rainbow underneath, so I'm about to test that now just to see what happens. They do highly recommend you not use the metal tools when you're working on the paper because these metal tools are extremely sharp and they do dig very, very deep and they may ruin or cut through your paper as you're working, so it's actually better to use either the wooden dowel or this little tool here when you're scraping. So I don't even know where I'm going to start. I think I'm just going to start by like making lines. Okay, down here is red. Down here is very, very red. There is a circle. Okay, that is this tip. 
And then this one is a lot finer, a lot sharper. Ooh, I like this one. Might have to try seeing if I can draw over this with maybe a white pencil or something just to see if I can get white marks on here as sort of an outline or a guideline for myself because when I do end up making actual art on these, I'm gonna need some sort of outline. I'm too scared to just try to freehand it. Well, I couldn't find anything white, but I did find a copper pen. So let's see, can the copper pen, okay, copper pen can go on top of it. There's something I can draw on top of it with, make an outline. Ooh, that looks really good. Okay, so there's a potential that I could use the white signal on top of it as well. Let's see, do I wanna draw my telephone head? Just a little trial. Where's my telephone? There he is, my favorite little guy, my little telephone head guy. I'm gonna try just doing a little drawing of telephone head. I'd really prefer something that has pencil, but I don't think I have anything that's opaque enough. I don't think I even have any colored pencils with me. I think I left them all at home. Draw the circles that make up the dial, and I need to make a bigger dial around it. I think I'm doing pretty good freehanding this so far. Then again, I've drawn them quite a bit. I've drawn telephone head quite a few times because I like Telephone Head. Telephone Head is a happy little chap. I'm also sitting at an angle, so I have no idea how this looks on the camera. It looks a little bit elongated. It looks quite elongated, actually. Okay, I can, I can erase slightly. Never mind, I just... I just cut straight into it. You know what? You're just gonna have a really thick base, all right? I know I'm pressing a little bit too hard in certain areas though, so I am trying to be a little bit lighter. I'm gonna start with just the highlighted areas, like the areas I know are gonna be crazy highlighted. Oh, I like the purple and pink. That's really pretty. I remember as a kid when I would get these, like they were just very like really oversaturated bright neon colors, and I wasn't a huge fan of that. So I like that this is a lot more subdued. I wonder how I can incorporate spooky stuff into this. I wonder if I can somehow make something Inktober related. Cause I could mix the inks together to get orange. I could mix the yellow and the red that I have sitting over there and make it into an orangey color. Could possibly make some pretty cool Halloween stuff with that. This is very disco-y, I like it a lot. Oh wait, I just made a mistake. Now that I felt I had the understanding of the core basics of the medium, I decided to just go in and try to experiment on stuff. I started playing around with little hatching, adding little lines to add like basically a third level of shading. I decided to try to use a black Copic marker to try to go over areas where I felt I had messed up so I could have a chance to go over them again. I was able to go over the areas I had done in the copper marker that I didn't want to be visible anymore with a black Copic marker. It completely covered it up and it looked really good. It's nice to see that this is a versatile medium that I can use to cover up my mistakes and still make it look good. And I know I've mentioned this before, but I have to say it again. I love this rainbow paper. I think, I don't know how they do this. I don't know how they make it be rainbow on the bottom and black on the top. I don't know how they do it. I, I don't know how it works, but I love it. It looks really cool. It's just so weird and funky and groovy and it just matches my vibe so well. I love it. It makes me feel happy. This is exactly the type of thing that I like working with. It's just really surprising and quirky and I think it works great with my object heads. All right, I just finished doing this. Honestly, this wasn't as hard on the hand as I thought it would be. I thought this would be a lot more pressure. I thought my hand would be hurting a lot more. But honestly, this this doesn't really hurt that bad. And I think it's because there's so little pressure I have to apply to this. And like having finished it, it looks really cool. I really like this technique of going in and like really scraping away as much of the black as you can to get as much of a solid color as you can and then using the middle to get these tiny little areas that look like cross hatching. And I think it was really cool to try it out with this as well. There's a little area where I didn't get right there that I gotta get. I haven't tried doing bubble lettering yet, so I might do that. And then let me see what the white looks like. If I try to add on another degree of shading, if I add the white, that could look really cool too. Going with my Signo, just highlighting areas where it's supposed to be extremely white. I think adding in the white adds another little bit of pop that just wasn't there before. It looks really cool. Just another level of dimension and depth to a piece. Just an extra little bit of shine on the body. I think a little bit of white could especially look good right here on this sleeve since this area is so big. I'm definitely gonna add this whenever I do whatever my final stuff is gonna be. It looks so good, I love it. Okay, adding the white was one of the best decisions I've made. The white looks so good, I love it. It just pops so much, it stands out, it's so bright and vivid, I love this. I love it so much. I'm gonna look at this from my angle, my perspective. Okay, I just tried a little bit of typography, a little bit of bubbly type. Let's see how much it pops when you add the white. Look at how much that makes it stand out. That looks so, so cool. Adds this extra flair to it that I absolutely love. See, it looks so cool. I love it. 
it just it pops it has so much color it stands out it looks like it's jumping off the paper at you i love it so much this is so cool okay so i spent a little bit of time creating an outline on the rainbow paper or rainbow scratch board i should say of my telephone head character i thought this would be a good one to start with just because i just did the practice run with it and i feel like it looks really good specifically with this character so i really want to try it again i decided to try and do an outline i discovered i have this little blue pen here that came in the screen printing box and i decided to try it and see how it would work on this paper and i don't know what sort of chemicals are in this in comparison to what's here on the scratch board but whatever is here whenever i lay down the ink turns the scratch board red which was really really interesting because then it gave me a nice subtle outline for me to reference while i'm working on this instead of trying to freehand everything and possibly screw up or smudge everything everywhere i feel like this is going to work a lot better this time i have much more of the body i have hands i have arms i have body parts here i feel like i made the torso too big again so I'm gonna definitely work on making that a little bit smaller. I feel like the head could be a little bit bigger. There's definitely things I could change and improve, but this is just what I'm gonna have to settle with for now. I may make some tweaks here and there. I may do some stuff as I'm fixing something right now that I just noticed, and we will see where this goes. I think I'm basically just gonna put this in time-lapse and do a voiceover just cause that's easiest and I'll be able, and I'll better be able to provide my thoughts and feedback as I'm working on this. Okay, well, it turns out past me was a genius for making future me go to voiceover mode. And that is because halfway through filming this video, once I finished making this, this telephone head and started working on the blocks, I got a cold and it was a pretty bad cold. And it was to the point where I was having a very hard time breathing and speaking and doing much of anything because breathing through my nose would make my nose stuffy, whereas breathing through my mouth would make my throat too sore to even speak. And I was having a very, very rough time. So I am very glad that I didn't have to try to provide any live voiceover as I was working on this. It's just helped a lot. <laughs> Looking back on it though, I absolutely love the way this one turned out. Honestly, just any Anything with my object heads makes me just very very happy. It's one of my favorite series I've ever done and I feel like this is honestly the best medium it could be adapted into. I do have one other project I'm working on that is working quite well with the object heads so I won't discuss that here. That is an entirely different project that's a little bit of a secret for right now that I'll be revealing in a little while. This in particular I feel is a great medium for the object heads. As I've said numerous times before, the object heads are just very quirky, very lively, very fun, and they're supposed to be weird and groovy and this just matches them perfectly. The black with the contrast of the neon rainbow colors, it just works so, so well. It works so well with these characters. And I only did the telephone head. I have a bunch of other characters this can apply to. I would love to see what the radio head looks like. I would love to see what the game controllers, like the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox controller look like. I think the axolotl bull head could look pretty cute. There's a lot of them I would really like to try with this and translate over into rainbow format, which I think could look really cool at some sort of eventual type of hollow sticker or something like that or even some sort of sparkly sticker. There's a lot of different options available for what we can do with this. For using the materials themselves, the process was a little bit unique in comparison to how I usually do stuff like this. I love working on toned paper and black is one where I have to work a little bit differently. Usually with black I'm just working with a singular tone. Usually I like to do stuff like, oh I like to use white pen on top of black. That is a singular tone. It's just black and white. There's no shading involved at all. Whereas with this one I had to build in a medium. I had to build in my what would be my base layer even though it sits technically on top of the shadow layers if that makes any sense. Essentially I had to go through a semi reverse process of what I usually do and it was definitely a challenge to try to work through that way and try to figure out a process that's sort of like a reverse but also isn't. The very first step was just to create an outline and then after that you have to create the outlines for where the midtone is then you have to create the outline for where the shadow is and you have to remember which section is which. Then you have to carve everything out. And then once everything's carved out, you have to decide, okay, where are my highlight areas? Where are my little shaded hatching areas? You have to figure that out, carve out all your highlights. And then you have to go in and you have to add the white, which is your top and final layer. And you have to decide where you want that to go. It's very much a strange back and forward process of starting with shadows, then building in your mid-tone, then roughing out the shadows again, then going back to your mid-tone, then adding cross-hatching, then adding highlights. It's so back and forward and randomized, there's like no order to it whatsoever. It's definitely a chaotic process, but I think I figured out a way to make it work for me that felt really easy once I got into the flow of things. I swear, I swear, 
This process makes sense in my head. It makes sense mentally. When I just do it, it makes sense. When I try to explain it in words, it just doesn't work. I tried to explain it as best as I can, but I feel like visually I'm showing how the process goes better than I am verbally trying to explain it. But now we're reaching the end of this part of the video and I'm almost done with this artwork and the process is about to change once again because I'm going to be switching over to doing the blocks next, which have a completely different technique. I'm using the different metal scrapers for that one. I'm not really using the little pointy one as much. I do end up using it for some super fine areas because it does have the finest tip, but my technique for just the blocks is completely completely different from this one. Absolutely, completely opposite. Completely different. So don't expect this method to cross over into the other types of scratch board stuff. This only applies, this has color, the others don't. And that's what makes the difference because I'm trying to add four layers worth of shading. Whereas in this one, I just have black and white and I'm not trying to do that. However, you will see as we transition over into the next one that I decided to go with a very similar aesthetic and theme for all three. And that's because I decided to go with over the garden wall as my theme. And I decided to recreate several screen caps from the show within my own, I guess, scratch board style. I don't, I wouldn't say I have a specific scratch board style, but that's what I was trying to do with it. Okay, I finished the rainbow telephone head one. The next thing I have to try is working on these boards. I have not used these metal scrapers yet, so this is going to be my first time trying them and using them. These are the only things that I use for these. I could use the other ones for this, but I feel like because this is a literal block, it would work better if I use these metal ones, give them a shot, see how they work. I am pretty comfortable with the other two. I'm pretty comfortable with the other two tools that I was given to use for this. I ended up not using the wooden sticks just because I didn't like them as much. I ended up using basically the other stick the entire time. I'm actually not sure where it went. I took a short break from filming. It's somewhere here on my desk. I just misplaced it. Here it is. I used this for the entirety of the rainbow telephone phone head. So I think it's time to switch material to start trying these out. And I've decided that I'm going to make three panels that are all just like over the garden wall. Each of these three is going to contain one of the screenshots from over the garden wall. At least two of them are going to be of Pottsfield. So I have one that's going to be the screenshot of the one pumpkin carving another pumpkin head. This one is going to be the skeleton putting on a pumpkin head. <laughs> Edward, this one's for you! And then the third one, I haven't decided yet. The third one might be Enoch, it might be the Beast, it might be just Wirt and Greg. I haven't decided yet, but I am definitely doing two of them. I'm definitely doing at least two of them with a theme of Pottsfield, because Pottsfield is my favorite episode. Hard Times at the Husk and Bee is my favorite Over the Garden Wall episode, and I would love to make fan art for that episode, so that's what I'm going to be doing. And once again, I'm going to be using this blue marker, because I feel like this is what works best for this material, so that's what I'm going to use for my sketching. All right, voiceover me is back. The very first thing I want to talk about is how different using this scratch board was from using the rainbow one. This one is so much thicker and the little scraper, I don't know what we're calling these. Are they called scrapers? Are they called carving tools? I'm gonna stick with carving tools. I, d I like the term carving. This was completely different than what I had done for the last one. This board was so much thicker and these tools were so much harder to learn how to use because I realized early on when using these that you have to have the tool and its blade pointed a very certain direction and you have to have it carve a very certain direction. If you don't, it's not going to pierce into the wood. If you don't, it's not gonna pierce into the material and it's not going to carve anything out. So you have to make sure that you're always pointing your tool in the right direction and if there's a way you wanna make a certain stroke, you basically have to rotate your canvas in order to get it to look the way you want. It's just a lot more rigid and a lot more complicated to work with than I thought it would be. I slowly got into the groove of it, but it was definitely complicated to be switching between different blades and learning which ones work, which ones don't. There were some where I would try to point them a certain direction and they would work, and others I tried to point them the same direction and they wouldn't work. Some of them you had to hold at a certain angle to get them to work. I noticed this happened with one of the ones with one of the larger blades. You had to point it more towards the side to get it to work, whereas others you wanted to be more overhead and directly on on top of it. It was very different to see the differences between the blades and how to get the best effect out of all of them. All right, jumping right on to this next one, I was feeling a lot more confident about this one. I knew there were areas that were just going to be straight up plain white. This one was going to be a lot easier to handle. I felt like I had a better understanding of how the different 
blades worked this time. Felt like I had a good understanding of which ones I should use and where I should use them, what direction I needed to make the blade go in to have it work correctly. This one I feel just flowed a lot better and I think it went a lot better since I had a little bit more experience with the blades. And this one went pretty quickly. This was a relatively quick one. I think it might have been the fastest out of the three. Maybe it's because it has a lot simpler shapes or it's a simpler character. I'm not completely sure. However, I do think it ended up looking pretty good and I think I was able to get quite a few interesting textures with this one, especially playing with the idea that this character is mostly created with just bones so I could really play around with how much I wanted the textures to show up if I wanted it to be all white or if I wanted it to have like little grooves in it which is eventually what I went with making the bones look sort of like uneven a little bit like worn I guess I would say. I also wasn't really looking for much of a light source with this one when I did the first one I was kind of thinking in terms of oh there's got to be like a light source that's going to be hitting the pumpkin and that's going to affect the way that I shape this but I realized that made it extremely complicated given that there's only two tones of value within these, just black and white. I figured it'd be better if I tried to play with little to no lighting sources whatsoever. I also couldn't find a lighting source that really made sense for this picture that I was referencing. So I just decided to go with it and not make any sort of real light source and just go with what I and just go with what I thought felt best and I think that honestly worked out for the better in the end because I think this one looks even better than the one of the other pumpkin. I just really like the way this one looks. It flows really well. It doesn't feel like it's too forced in the lighting. I think it looks pretty good. No, there is only me. There is only my way. There is only the forest, and there is only surrender. Okay, forget what I just said. This last one was definitely the one that went the quickest. I chose my last one to be the beast. I was debating for a long time. Did I want to do Enoch? Did I want to do Work Greg and Beatrice? But I wanted to really stick with that dark vibe. I wanted to play with characters that are like really dark. I wanted to have a character that could be backlit and have an intense shadow over them. I wanted to stick with the creepy vibe since it is Halloween season and I'm filming this in October. We're in the middle of spooky season, right in the middle of Inktober. So who else could I go with than the Beast? I felt like this one is a good finale piece to really challenge everything that I've done with this box and the supplies within it. This one I do have a light source. Like I said, I wasn't using a light source in the last one because the first time it was too challenging. But with this one being backlit, I felt like I understood the lighting a lot better and I knew exactly where to go. Starting with the lighting being the brightest at the center, surrounding the Beast's head and his eyes, and then slowly getting darker and darker as you fade out and you can really only see the minor details of the trees behind him. This one just was pretty streamlined and simple for me. It allowed me to play with lots of textures while I was building out the trees and it let me just have this black form of the beast standing menacingly in the front and I just really like that. I think it adds a lot of creepiness. I think it just adds a lot of impact to this piece and I don't think I would have gotten that if I had done another character. I feel like this style in particular that you use when you're doing scratch boarding works very well for the beast. It makes you feel disturbed but in a way that's like interesting and intriguing and that's the vibe I want to get with these. It challenges you to work in a negative space in a way that you wouldn't if you're working on white or tan paper where you're doing the opposite of what is normally done. It provides a completely different effect that I think works great with this particular character. I also just really wanted to try to draw the beast because I've never attempted to draw him before, never even considered it. I love his character design so much and I could rave about it forever, but I've never tried to draw him before. So I figured why not take the chance and try to make a little bit of art with him, just a little bit, see how it works out. Okay, these are the three I made with the three boards that I was given. I did two from episode two, Hard Times of the Husk and Bee, and then I made this one, which is a direct reference to screen caps from The Beast. I don't remember which exact episode this is right at the moment, but I love this screen cap. I love The Beast. I was originally gonna go with either Enoch or one of Wirt, Greg, and Beatrice, but I was like, 
Hmm, I want to do something creepier. Anyway, these are my three. And I only have one more thing left to do because I've already tested the rainbow one. And now I believe the only thing I have left to do is test the inks that came in the box. I have not tried these yet. And I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do is I'm going to try the pink and the yellow, see if I can make an orangey color and see how it works on this and paint in this one and this one. This one's going to stay black and white because that's how the beast looks. That's just what I'm going to stick with. But I will be trying to make an orange color for these two and we'll see how it looks. All right, time to see how these bad boys work. Okay, that's a good orange. I like that orange. Ooh, I like how it gets lighter as you get into the areas where there's more white. That looks really good. You know what? I'm just going to go over it with orange. It seems a little bit clumpy. That could be just the textures of where I was etching in with the scrapers. It could just be the texture of where I was scraping in with the knives though, like in this area, getting the cuts to stay consistent and be of a consistent depth. So these marks here could just be a difference in depth from where I was cutting. All right, at this point we have tried out everything that came in this scratch board themed box. I'm just trying to get everything out here so I can show a little bit of everything that I worked on for this video using these supplies. I had a really fun time with it. I've never tried scratch board before. That's always the fun thing about Smart Art or Gets Muse Kits now is that they're always sending something brand new that I've never tried or something that I'm excited to work with that I have never gotten the chance to work with before. There's just so many cool things that they've given in these boxes and I'm always looking forward to the opportunity to try something new with these. Whether you're making something super duper colorful, whether you're making something that's super duper colorful, or something that's a lot more elegant or spooky or line art themed. This is, Scratchboard has a bit of everything. And I think the stuff that I managed to make with this across a wide variety of styles and textures and different techniques was quite interesting. And the October box has already arrived and sitting on my bed right now, so I already have another box to open as we speak. I hope you all enjoyed this video, watching me go through the process of learning how to use Scratchboard and creating all these wonderful things. I especially love all these over the garden wall themed ones, and I love the beast one. This is my favorite one of the three that I've made. I also love Little Telephone Head. I'm definitely going to make more of the rainbow series that look like this from my other object heads in the future just because I really like the look that it gives off. I love the style. I love how much it pops. I'm definitely going to do more of these. And for now, I think I'm just going to end this video and start opening up the next box and see what's inside that one. As always, I hope you all enjoyed. You can always like, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I know if you've liked any of my other work, you can always support me in my Redbubble shop, the link to which is in my bio. And of course, check out Get Muse Kits. They're the ones who provide me with all these materials. They're the ones who make these boxes. They are absolutely awesome. Links to all of their socials are in my description as always. And that is it for now, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody! I wanna be